I want to thank all of you for joining me. And today we are going to discuss what's happening in the marketplace, whether or not new construction is warranted, whether we're going into a bubble, what's happening in the marketplace right now. And I want to thank Lea Valley Association of Realtors for providing a lot of this data and a lot of this information that we're going to take a quick step through. First of all, looking at the most recent snapshot put together by the Lea Valley Association of Realtors for September of 2020, we're looking at some pretty interesting numbers. The one year change in closed sales was 23%. Now that doesn't tell the entire number because or the entire story because the year to date has actually not been quite as strong. But September of 2020 was significantly higher than September of 2019. Second part of it is the change in inventory is down by more than half over the same inventory that we saw last year. And of course, one year change in median sales price is up almost 15%. This is to be expected though. When we have very little inventory in the marketplace and we have a lot of buyers who wanna take advantage of buying a house now with interest rates being as low as they are, you're going to see prices rise. And this is where some of you get the idea that perhaps we might be getting into a bubble. And I'll explain where we are in that and uh, how that impacts the rest of the uh, economy for real estate in the Leah Valley market at the moment. If we look at the new listings coming into the marketplace, one of the interesting things to look at is the fact that even though September was a strong month with 1,049 a, a, a homes coming on the market up 12.8% from the prior year, year to date, we're still significantly down. 7,300 homes have come on the market so far in 2020 in the Leah Valley marketplace compared to 9,000 in um, 2019 and, and uh, 9,365 in 2018. Part of the reason we're down so significantly has to do with the pandemic and the fact that we were quarantined for a period of time and a lot of people didn't put their homes in the market. But part of it also has to do with the fact that people are scared right now. Some of them are, are afraid of the job situation, that they may not be going back to work. They wanna wait until next year to put their homes on the market. And that may mean a stronger inventory in 2021. It might, it might not. Part of the reason that there's a, a weakening in inventory this year also has to do with the fact that there are a number of consumers in the marketplace or homeowners in the marketplace that are concerned to allow people to come through their homes that may or may not be COVID positive. And with that fear of somebody bringing COVID into their houses, it's reducing the number of homes that have gone on the market by 18.4% compared to last year, almost one in five didn't come on the market this year as expected. And that is helping to create this tremendous demand that's driving prices up. Closed sales this year are also down significantly, despite the fact that we're looking at an increase of 23.2% in September and continuing to rise, there can only be as many houses sold as there is inventory coming into the marketplace. And with a reduced inventory, we're actually down year to date 15.4% in number of closed transactions that have happened. Now, if you look at this historically, by the way, the peak of the market when everything went crazy back in 2005, 2006 is back here. And you're seeing at the peak of the market in the spring of 2005, in excess of a thousand homes sold in a one month period. And you see that consistently along the spring of 2005 and 2006. And 2007 is where the market started falling. Now, incidentally, there was still heavy demand in 2007 and 2008, even though the market had started to tank. It's one of the interesting things when we talk about the marketplace in the Leah Valley, where so many people say, yes, 2008 was when the recession began. It actually started in the uh, end of 2006 when things started to slow down but prices continued to rise despite the slowdown in the marketplace. And you can see that here. Instead of 1,050 homes selling in a month, it might've been 825, but still a very, very strong market. And it continued to decline right down to the bottom in 2019 and kind of creeped along. And you're seeing the winter times have uh, fewer sales than the peaks. So at the, uh, in the winter of 2009, you might have seen 200 or 220 sales as opposed to the peak, which was over 600. But you see this uh, reducing over a period of time and slowly starting to come back up. But even in the market today, you're still not seeing the historic close sales of over a thousand. We're getting close here with September, 
at 897, but we're still not hitting these numbers from 2005, 2006. And that incidentally is one of the reasons I'm not afraid of a bubble just yet. The other interesting thing is the number of days on market until sale. If you look back at the peak of the market in 2005 and six, we're seeing 45 days, 50 days, average between the time a property went on the market and sold based on um, days on market for inventory. When the market got really slow for those houses that sold, we're over 100 days. Right now we're down at 34 uh, or, and 21 if you look at just September, which is just incredible. <clears throat> Median sales price is up and this is where uh, consumers start worrying about a bubble in the marketplace. But let me explain where this comes from. If you look at a typical market of anything, whether you're looking at the stock market or whether you're looking at um, any sort of uh, inflation, including real estate, what should typically happen over time is that everything should rise by inflation. Even if that inflation is two and a half, three percent, two percent, it should be rising. Now, for in 2005, prices were below 160 as median sales price. In a very short period of time, over this period from 2005 to 2007, they came up here to about 220. And then they fell for the next uh, dozen years. So where this, even with a recession, a typical recession would have lasted a year, maybe 18 months. We had the longest recession in real estate since the Great Depression. It was actually a longer decline than the Great Depression was in real estate prices in our area. So if you look at these numbers, the prices actually fell, despite inflation driving the, the median up, the prices of these houses fell all the way through about 2015. We're still looking at really low bottom numbers that were stable here from 2013 to 2015 before they started rising. Here's the interesting thing. We didn't hit that 220 level again all the way until the spring of 2019 last year. So going over this period from 2007 to 2019, which is 12 years, there's no rise in prices over that period of time. They actually fell for a long period of time. And by the way, our expectation is that we're probably not going to see a recession like this again in our lifetime. The only one before this was all the way back in the Great Depression. There are always market cycles, there are always corrections. We're going to have a bubble, it's going to retrench a little bit, and then it's going to come back, it always does. But had this continued to go up, even at 2% a year, we would have been way beyond this number in 2019. We've been, been up here somewhere. And we're going to see this in the affordability index. Now, there is a big jump from 2019 to 2020. You're seeing a 9.6% jump year to date, up to 224.9, which is still not significantly higher than that 220 that we're looking at back in 2007. But with this jump, it's just finally catching up with what we would have seen had this followed the inflation rate over all this time. Same thing with average sales price. Average tends to be a little bit higher than the median sales price, and that's partly based on the product mix. If we've got more new construction in the marketplace, if we've got more high-end homes that are selling, you're going to see an average sales price that's going to be driven up a bit. Same thing if we have fewer foreclosures in the marketplace, which we're experiencing as well. The median may stay fairly stable, but taking out those low end sales actually increases the average sales price. Percentage of list price received is just amazing. You're seeing basically 100% in September of 2020. And part of that, uh, what's happening in the marketplace is we're putting properties on the market in some areas and within days they're getting seven, eight, 10 offers. Uh, we've seen just incredible response uh, in both Lea Valley market and the Pocono market. You're seeing some incredible responses. Even though it says that it's basically 100%, that doesn't mean that every house is getting full price. There are some houses that are going significantly over. There are multiple bids that are driving prices up. And there are still some houses that are selling under. So the average right now, percent of list price received was 99.9%. Now, this is the one that, I'm, that makes me feel a little bit better about this rise in prices. Back here in 2006, 7, and 8, the affordability was not that great. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't that great for uh, homeowners in the Lehigh Valley compared to what it became. Homes became actually almost twice as affordable, became very, very affordable. And that's based partly on what the average income is for the average household versus what their mortgage payment is going to be. 
So even with low interest rates and with um, the average prices, you're going to see houses being crazy affordable in that 2012, 13, 14, 15 timeframe. Now they're becoming slightly less affordable because housing prices are going up. But keep in mind, the average household can still afford more house right now today than they could back here in 2008. Even with all the government programs in 2008, they're still more affordable today. What does that mean? It's still a good time to buy. And it means that uh, realistically, there may be some movement upward yet in the marketplace. Inventory homes is one that's really interesting to me. We're, we're talking to a lot of developers in the marketplace as to whether or not developments are going to work, trying to estimate the supply and demand coming into the marketplace. But when you look at the inventory of homes in September, in 2018, there's 2,367. It dropped by almost 21% to 2019, September, down to 1,875. And then in uh, 2020, we're down by 51.1% to 917 homes. Now, let me go back a second and show you a different graph. 917 homes being uh, as uh, stable on the market right now in the Lehigh Valley. And yet, if we look at the number of closed sales in September, there were 897. That's effectively 100% almost. You're looking at 897 sales, closed transactions, compared to 917 properties on the market. Even when the market was insane in 2005 and 2006, we had two to 3,000 homes on the market. We've got less than 1,000 here. When we went through the recession, we statically had about 5,000 properties on the market. And it's interesting because there were some, mar there were some months when 1,000 homes came on the market and only 400 sold. But at the same time, 600 people gave up. They either rented the property or they gave it back to the bank. They walked away from it or they decided to stay. But consistently, there were about 5,000 homes for sale during this period of time of several years. Now we're at less than a fifth of that in 2020. And that, again, is what's driving prices up. And that leads us to the month supply of inventory. The month supply of inventory is how long is it going to take to sell the average house? Now, back here in 2012, you've got 12 months of inventory. Here, you've got just over a month. So houses are selling very, very quickly. And just so you understand this a little bit better, absorption rate months inventory. If a real estate market has 100 active listings, we've got about 1,000. But if a real estate market has about 100 active listings and 30 of those properties were sold during the month, that absorption rate will be 30%, 30 sales for 100 active listings. Months inventory is basically inver inverting that equation. So it indicates the number of months it takes to go uh, complete supply of active listings to be sold. So if there were 100 homes for sale in a marketplace, and there were 30 selling a month, it would take three and a third months to actually uh, sell out that inventory. In this case, it's um, just over a month to sell out the inventory that exists. And that leads us to where we are in the market. Now, this is, these are my rules of thumb, and they have been argued with by many other professionals. A buyer's market, in my mind, is anything that's seven months or greater. Uh, once we pass six months of inventory, we get into a buyer's market. There's excess supply in the marketplace. There's more inventory leading to less offers because buyers have their choices of what's available for them to make offers on. There's a declining price in the marketplace, declining value of houses because buyers are bidding for the, the best value in the marketplace. Sellers are bringing their prices down to beat meet what buyers are willing to pay. When we get into a balanced market, that's where that inventory is somewhere between four and seven months. That's a typical healthy market, a balanced supply, houses sell in a typical period of time, and equal demand and supply lead to balanced offers. You've got stable value, you've got stable prices. They are gonna to continue to rise, but they're probably gonna to continue to rise by the inflation rate. And then we do get into times like now, which are a seller's market, where the months of inventory are less than the four. And again, we're at 1.4 months as of this uh, September 2020. There is limited supply, scarce supply. There's less inventory, which is going to lead to more offers. And there's increasing value in prices. So the other thing that is impacting our market right now is an almost non-existent foreclosure market. When we look back three or four years ago, there were a lot of foreclosures and a lot of short sales happening in the Lehigh Valley marketplace and in the Pocono marketplace. So when we look at the Lehigh Valley as an example, there were sections in Lehigh Valley where 15% of the inventory on the market were foreclosures. 
in the Poconos, there were pockets that were over 20%. So you'd have an area where one in five homes was a foreclosure or a short sale. That's a lender mediated activity, which tends to bring prices down. Now take a look at the year to date right now in closed sales in 2020. We're showing 17 lender mediated sales. That's non-existent. 0.3%. It's unheard of. 0% in Allentown, 0% in Bethlehem, 0.6% uh, in Easton. These are incredible numbers. And that, of course, is leading to, again, the lower inventory. Now, of course, um, foreclosures did get cut off by the quarantine. And there are uh, a lot of them that will eventually be pending and coming on the market. But I don't think that's going to significantly impact the market at this point in time. So one of the things builders are asking us right now is, is now the time to build? And it is very hard to build these days because you have to take it through subdivision. The subdivision process has gotten longer. It's gotten more complicated. There are a lot of expenses involved in it. But keep in mind the population of the Lehigh Valley market as well as the entire country is growing. It's growing at a fairly rapid pace. There's more need, more demand for housing in the marketplace. We had just gone through a period of time where we had uh, one of the lowest homeownership rates in history. It had dropped below 64% after the Great uh, Recession. Some of those uh, people are coming back into the marketplace and wanting to buy. We also had a period of time where millennials were not buying homes. And part of the reason for that was they couldn't find jobs or not jobs that were sufficient to pay the bills to own a house. Part of the reason was they wanted to be able to uh, transfer from job to job because they didn't expect to stay at the same job for 30 years like some of uh, us older type people. But there are more and more millennials coming into the marketplace right now. So is now the time to build? And it really depends. We have to look at what product type you're trying to build. We have to look at what the current anticipated supply is going to be. Uh, including new construction completions and approved building permits. When I'm trying to analyze this, we're looking at the entire market. We're trying to look at the pocket where you're planning on developing and try and figure out whether or not it's going to work. We want to look at what the expected demand is going forward, and we want to uh, try and uh, look at the project compared to other projects that are nearing completion or that are uh, available right now. For example, if you're planning on building office space today as opposed to housing, uh, we want to look at what the uh, vacancy rate is for office space in the submarket that you're trying to build in. We want to look at what the other offices offer as amenities, if they've got a um, uh, health center in there, if they've got a daycare center, if there's something that will attract uh, those tenants to that building over another one. In the housing market, where are buyers going to move to? What are they looking for? What amenities are other builders offering? Can we offer that for the same price or a lower price? Is it something that we're going to be able to sell out? And then we try and look at the absorption schedule and try and figure out whether or not it's going to work. So that's my quick look at what's happening in the Lehigh Valley marketplace. You can always contact me. I want to thank all of you for being with us today. You can always check us out online at zaphomesearch.com. And if you want to email me, I'm at c21kein at gmail.com. Again, thank you so much for being with us today. Any questions at all you have, please reach out to me. I'll be happy to help any way I can. Thank you.